Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Priority Software. I'm Maya and today I'll show you how to define new users in Priority and assign them privileges for working in the system. We'll be opening a new user using a dedicated program. The same program is also used for defining a new privilege group. We'll then define which entities in Priority this privilege group can access using the Privilege Explorer. The Privilege Explorer allows you to assign to users read or write privileges to priority entities such as forms, programs and reports or to deny access to these entities altogether. In addition, it lets you fine-tune permissions by defining a field or a sub-level as read-only and contains other features such as dealing with warning messages and defining fields as mandatory for a group of users. We'll go into this in a minute. Currently, I'm logged into the system as the tabular user, which is the predefined super user. Users who are assigned to the tabular privilege group and users for whom the manage all users flag is checked in the user permissions form can define privileges in the system. Let's start by opening a new group leader. From the users submenu, Run Add New User. Let's call the new group Warehouse, since we'll be defining the privileges of our warehouse staff. I'm putting down fictitious values in the mandatory columns, since this is not a real person. Leave the Privilege Group Leader column empty, as this user is itself a Privilege Group Leader. After pressing OK, we're done, and the new group leader is defined. The next step is to define privileges for this group leader. From the Privileges submenu, run the Privilege Explorer. The Explorer is built like Priority's menu tree, so that for a user to be able to access a branch of the tree, all the branches leading up to that entity have to be accessible. These radio buttons here in the middle indicate the privilege level for this entity. This means that the first step is granting privileges to the main menu by clicking here in the right run column. The entire menu turns green, which means full access to all the entities. Now we'll revoke privileges to any unnecessary menus. So let's revoke privileges from all the menus but one, the inventory menu. Note that now, since the main menu contains mixed privileges, meaning that some of its submenus are right run and the others blocked. The line for the main menu displays both a red semicircle and a green one. So for a menu line, semicircles indicate that the user can open this menu but doesn't have full access to all its sub-entities. Moving over to the inventory menu, let's leave right run privileges for the parts and warehouse control menus and navigate the menu until we reach the Customer Shipments form. For this privilege group, I'm going to leave the form with Right Run Privileges and go into the finer details and features available for forms. For example, I can decide I want to prevent the warehouse people from changing the customer in a shipping document. Here on the right hand side, click on the Column Privileges icon and mark the customer number as well as the customer name as read-only. Now, say we want to enforce a rule that customer shipments can only be completed if they are assigned to one of the company branches. Scrolling down, find the branch code column and mark it as mandatory. Don't forget to click on Save. Let's see a couple of other possibilities available here. If you click on the triangle, it opens a list of warning messages predefined in this form. You have the option of either preventing a message from appearing entirely or of turning it into an error message and thus preventing the user from performing whatever action it is which triggers the message. For example, we can change the message, which warns us that the branch in the document is not in use, to an error message. Right-click the relevant message and select Error Message. Note that another feature 
is the ability to prevent users from deleting records. This is usually used in the context of the document items. In this case, the shipped items sublevel form. To do this, find the form in the list of sublevels for the customer shipments form and remove the check mark next to delete records. To save all the definitions we've made up to this point, click on the save icon. After saving, you can copy these privileges to other users or other companies by clicking here. If you choose to copy to other users, you can copy to those users in other companies with an additional click on this button, rather than splitting this move to different actions. Right now I'll close this window, as I won't be copying these definitions. As I mentioned before, beneath the customer shipments form are other entities, its sublevels and direct activations. Defining privileges for these entities works exactly the same as in other areas of the Privilege Explorer. For example, if I want to prevent the warehouse staff from opening an invoice for shipping documents, I'll revoke access to the various Prepare Invoice direct activations. For demonstration purposes, let's also assign read-only privileges to the Customer Details sublevel form. Once I assign different privileges to the Customer Shipments form's sub-entities, something interesting happens. The green circle indicating that the form has write-run privileges becomes a semicircle, while the other indicators remain empty. This is different from the indication we saw for a menu with mixed privileges in which more than one circle lit up. In forms, the colored circle is an indication of the privileges for the form itself, and not only for its sub-entities, so only one circle can be highlighted at a given moment to prevent confusion. Before we exit the Explorer, just a quick mention of a convenient feature in the web interface. Instead of opening the Explorer and navigating its menus like I've shown you, you can navigate the main menu to the relevant entity, right-click on its name, and select Open in the Privilege Explorer. This feature is also available from the Entity Search window. At this point, let's say we've finished defining privileges for the Warehouse group, so I'll click on Save again and exit the Explorer. Now, let's add a user to the new group. Assuming that this is a new user, run the Add New User program again, this time to add a real person. Filling in the mandatory information, make sure you select Warehouse in the Privilege Group Leader column. The user was added successfully. The next step would be to define the password for Lisa. From the same menu, run Assign Password and define it there. Say 1, 2, 3. By the way, to avoid easy user passwords, such as this one, you can set a password policy and define the minimum password length and flag complex password to force the users to define a password made up of upper and lower case letters, numbers and special characters. Now I'll access the system as the new user. I'll simply refresh the browser window to reload priority and in the login page record Lisa's username and password 123. Note that if Lisa forgets her password at any point, she can click on Forgot Password which will trigger a process of resetting the password. An email confirmation message will be sent to the email defined for Lisa in the personnel file form. I'll skip this for now. Logged on as Lisa, you can see that only the inventory menu is available. And when you navigate it, the entities appear according to the privileges we just defined. Going back to the tabular user, if at any point you want to change the privilege group to which Lisa is assigned, all you have to do is open the user's form, retrieve Lisa's user, and choose a different group leader. Since we're already here in the user's form, let's also take a quick look at the user permissions sublevel. 
It includes definitions of permissions for other types of actions in the system, such as document design. If this is flagged, Lisa has the ability to design various document printouts in the system. To learn more about each definition, press F1 on the keyboard and the help screen will open. Another important feature is the privilege groups by company sublevel, where you can assign additional privilege groups for users with multiple roles. This concludes our explanation of users and privileges in priority. For more information, right-click the relevant topic in the menu and click on Online Help to access standard operating procedures and frequently asked questions on the subject.